Thank you for tuning in. I'm Lewis Lee with the First African Baptist Church located here in Goldsboro, North Carolina, where our theme is encouraging hearts, changing lives, and saving souls. God is blessed, and we certainly thank you for tuning in with us as we're rounding out the study of Acts, and we certainly thank God for blessing and moving and just having his way as we attempt to grow closer and connect back to the love and the power that's found in God's original church. Today, we'll be picking up in Acts, and we'll be starting at verse 23. I'm going to speak of just a brief word by the power of God's Holy Spirit and hope and pray that it will touch someone's heart and be a blessing to you. But the scripture says in Acts the 28th chapter verse 23, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus both out of the law of Moses and out of the law of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things that were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Esaias, Isaiah the prophet, unto our father, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and shall be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they that will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concerned the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence as no man forbidding him. My, 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 after all that Paul had been through, <coughs> God used this series of days that now he established Paul in his own place of worship and Bible teaching. And nobody disturbed him, but he was free to teach and to share the goodness of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you briefly from the topic, the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. Dear Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we magnify your holy name. Thank you, God, that you're an awesome God. Thank you, God, that you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, God, that there's strength and power and deliverance and love and forgiveness and a brand new start for each of us in the precious name of Jesus. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Dealing with the day after tomorrow. We are so consumed often in our lives with what we are dealing with in the very present day. And sometimes the pressures of the day are so strong that they interrupt our sleep, they interrupt our inner peace, they interrupt our freedom of mind, that often the problems of today can seep into tomorrow. We're all living witnesses and we felt the, the hurt that comes about when something consumes us so bad that it disrupts us and we, we lack in our sleep and we lack in our ability to rest and it's always an ever going quest and desire to know what is gonna happen next. Paul with all of the might and power and strength that God had blessed him with stood in the same shoes and the same dilemma that we fall under ourselves today. For we know that Paul had already been preaching and teaching and locked up and beat up and sent with the centurion and the other prisoners as if he was a band of prisoners, as if he had committed some murder. And we know the story of how when they were in the ship and the boat got off course a little bit, and God told Paul that if they stay in the ship, nobody would lose life. And over in the 27th chapter, Paul told the brothers, he said, just stay in the ship. And God blessed and he spoke to the waves and he calmed down 
around the problems for a temporary moment to allow the sailors, the, the soldiers, the centurion, and even the prisoners to eat till their bellies were full. A matter of fact, they ate so much that they actually removed and discarded the extra food that was on the boat so that it would not balance, it not throw off the balance and <coughs> the equilibrium that they were that was necessary so that they could make it to the other side. But then it looked like that everything was under control today. Tomorrow showed up. Tomorrow showed up in that same boat that Paul had prophesied and said, if you stay in the boat, then no one would be hurt and everyone would make it over to dry land. We, we gain strength in knowing that when we stay in the boat, God will make a way. When we stay in the boat of our churches, if we stay in the ship of our families, if we stay in the ship and the fellowship of our closely knit loved ones, if we stay in the ship of good teaching that encourages our soul, we are living witnesses and testimonies that we can make it over to dry land. But this time Paul told them to stay in the ship and you'll make it over and the brothers must have been mighty afraid now when the boat got off course and the ship started falling off. But don't you know, Paul never promised them that they would arrive in the ship. He never promised them that the ship would maintain her natural duty. Paul never promised her that the stock market would perform based on how I thought it ought to perform. He never promised him that he would have have the job that he dreamed about and how he prescribed his job. God never even promised us that our marriages would be exactly the way we dream with the white picket fence and everybody's cooperative and every day smelling like a bed of roses, but he did promise us that if we trust him, he will provide. So with that level of trust, Paul learned in all the men, the scripture says some that were able to swim, they jumped out and they swam the dry land. They said that some that were able to take over the lifeboats, they sailed the dry land. And there was even some that were left in a major hurdle and they jumped upon the broken boards and it was the boys that allowed these brothers to just come in and they coasted in on dry land. But when they got there, there it was again. It seemed like, here we go again, Lord. It seemed like there is no rest. There was no stopping. There was no help. There was no relief. There was no strength. There was no might. There was always something in the background that created a nuisance to doing what they had to do. So when Paul stuck out his hand in front of the barbarians and that poison serpent latched onto his hand and Paul just shook it off and all of a sudden they perceived that Paul was a god and they said you are somebody look at God now sending forth a delusion in front of those folk. God sent forth a diversion in front of those folk. God sent forth a prophet fulfillment in front of those folks that Paul belonged to him and there was nobody that could separate him from what God had in store so it was at that moment and it was at that beckon and call that when Paul began to talk and tell about the goodness of the Lord they were bringing folks around and they were being healed and set free from their sickness and Paul said you know I really don't know what tomorrow hold but God has worked it out today but as soon as Paul got up and got his sleep together, just like that Isle of Malta was a here we go again moment, there was another day and another situation. The old songwriter used to say another day and another dollar, meaning that every time we can get ahead, something was climbing and pulling and scratching, always attempting to bring us back to hurt our praise and to hurt our testimony of God Almighty. So when Paul got off the ship and after all that they had been through and the centurion brought him over into Rome, Paul got off the ship and they treated Paul and they came in and Paul was so fixated on what had happened yesterday and what was he was dealing with today and his concerns and his ulcers and his indigestion and his heartburn and his reflux and what was going to come up tomorrow that Paul began to open up his mouth and began to talk and Paul told the leaders when he got that the centurion presented him and said, here are my prisoners and here is Paul. 
And when Paul got there, they, they said, Paul, what's the matter? And Paul said, don't you know that we've been there and, and every time it looks like I feel like I'm moving along, it seemed like something from my own Jewish people is pulling me back. He said, they are always spreading discourse and claiming that I'm speaking against the cause of Christ. And the Roman leader said, well, well, well Paul, we really hadn't heard about what you're talking about and we don't have any mention about this and it just goes to show that sometime our past can pull on us so hard that not only does it affect our present day it affects our present our next day but God is calling upon us to look beyond what we can see and what we can estimate and what we can guess for tomorrow and know that down the road God will provide God will make a way and God is not limited to what I'm going through today God is not limited to the challenges that may face me tomorrow but God holds the king in the kingdom and the end game that's why he didn't stop at saying that he was alpha but he went a little further and said that he was also omega so that he had everything under his control so when Paul began to tell him they said Paul just chill for a few days Paul began to chill for a few days. They allowed him to get him a place to set up shop where he could talk about the goodness of the Lord. They allowed him to borrow out so that he signed the lease for two years. And Paul began to tell the story and some believed and some did not believe. And Paul even went back and quoted the prophet Isaiah when Isaiah said that some will fall on deaf ears and they won't hear you. Their eyes will see you, but they won't be able to see and comprehend you because they have shut themselves up because they don't want to do what is right. Have you ever ran into somebody that no matter how much logic you bring, how much excitement you bring to the table, how much joy you have about what God is doing. They have purpose in their hearts that I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be mean. I'm going to be hungry. I'm going to be hangry. I'm going to be all these things that were hurt from us getting along and moving forward to the glory of the Lord. It's a danger to purpose something bad in your heart like you know what tomorrow holds because while we may have anxiety about tomorrow, why we may have heartburn about tomorrow, even after tomorrow, we serve the Omega God, so he holds the day after tomorrow in the palm of his hands. The text went on to say that all of the leaders said, Paul, we find no fault in what you're talking about. Matter of fact, some of these Gentile Romans have received power and might, and they've fallen in love with the name of Jesus from the teachings that you gave so they're able to press on and the text says that Paul was able to chill and preach right there in his apartment for two years telling men, women, boys and girls about the goodness of Jesus. He was broadcasting his word from Rome to Sicily to Pompeii. He was broadcasting his word from Georgia to South Carolina, from Tennessee to Nevada. He was broadcasting that word from Virginia to Maryland to New Hampshire to Delaware and to Denver too. He was broadcasting that word so that all men will know that God is a way maker. And that's why as believers, let's don't be deterred by today. Today, let's not be anxious about tomorrow because if we fall down today, if we have to deal with the scars of life on tomorrow, God is a big picture God. And not only does he hold today, not only does he hold tomorrow, but he holds the day after tomorrow and if you don't believe that God is a day after tomorrow God just reflect back on your own life when you were in a bind and you did not know how you were gonna make it through you were in a pressure cooker 
and you face the day that you don't even know how you made it over. It was one day you thought that you were gonna lose it. It followed you the next day. Had you taken headache medicine, popping BCs and Tylenol, acetaminophen and ibuprofen, trying to ease the pain, stirring out a cup of coffee, knocking down diet Mountain Dews and Pepsi Colas and Coca Colas, trying to calm yourself from the troubles, the bills, the notices, the bad messages, the heartache. But when you look back over the curtain and the view of history and where God brought you, you don't even remember how you made it. But we are here today. You don't remember how you were revived, but you are alive today. You don't even remember when you were healed, but you are healed today because God holds everything. And that's why when I think about Paul, somewhere he must have heard Jesus and remember Jesus in the 14th chapter when he said let not your heart be troubled because if you believe in God today you believe also in me and Paul said if you don't know what's going on tomorrow Jesus told him that in my father's house there are many matches there and I'm going to prepare a place for you and then he went and let me tell you what's going to happen the day after tomorrow I'm going to prepare a place for you but I'm coming back again to receive you to myself that where I am there you may be it also that was just a reminder we learned from Paul today don't worry about today don't get hung up on yesterday don't lose your sleep and let it run over into tomorrow but as long as you can just hold on to God's unchanging hand he will make a way the songwriter closed it out when he said that time is filled with swift transition more than on earth unmoved can stand but we as believers we're trusting in God and we're building our hope on something that's eternal is bigger than yesterday is bigger than today and is bigger than tomorrow and that hope is built on holding on to Jesus hands the songwriter reminds us you just hold to his hands God's unchanging hands and then you build your hope on things eternal but you just got to hold on to God's unchanging hands don't get hung up on yesterday do not get depressed because of today and do not get filled with anxiety worrying about tomorrow because we serve a God who holds eternity in his hands Thank God that because he lives, there is a day after tomorrow. If you're listening today and you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus, while we may get excited and celebrate the goodness in the name of Jesus, you may not understand why we're so happy about Jesus. But one thing you do know this day and this moment, you need the presence of God in your life. You're broken. You feel like hope is lost. And today, God is leading and you stand with the question, how can I make Jesus my savior? Well, the answer is simple. The first thing is, no matter what you've done in the world, no matter how bad life has been, no matter what sin you've committed, Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the full price for your sins. So today, not only does God want to forgive you for your sins, not only does he want to write your name in his heavenly book, so that you could be with him when your time is over in your days after tomorrow. But he also wants to come into your heart and become savior and Lord of your life. And if that fits your case, please pray with me. Dear Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. Thank you for dying on the cross. And today I ask that you would come into my heart and make me a better Christian. Forgive me, Lord. Today, I ask that I can start anew with you as my Savior. Thank you, God, for saving my soul. 
It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, bless you. May God bless you. And I do encourage you to reach out. If you're a part of a local church, reach out to your church and tell them exactly the prayer that you prayed. God has already touched their heart. They'll be ready for you. If you do not have a church home, but you know someone in your family, on your job, or someone you're close with that represents Jesus Christ, reach out to them. God has prepared their hearts to help you. If you don't have anyone in your life, email me at the bottom of this channel and I'll respond personally. May God bless you.